Hey guys, The Common Man here. So I just picked up, uh, well I shouldn't say just picked up, I've had this for probably uh, maybe a month and a half or so. Uh, what this is is the Leatherman Surge. So this thing is a very, very robust, beefy version of Leatherman's uh, classic multi-tool, the Leatherman Wave. And you can see that it is uh, considerably bigger than the Leatherman Wave. So this thing, um, like I said, I you know I, I picked it up not too long ago. I had the Leatherman Wave. I was very happy with it. Um, it's a great in-the-pocket multi-tool. It's actually not a very big tool and um, you know in, in good ways and in bad ways I found myself um, really kinda wishing I had a tool that was just a little bit bigger something that I could uh, I don't know feel like I could really put a massive beating on um, again the Leatherman Wave is an incredible robust tool it it held up to everything that I threw at it but uh, just having something a little bit bigger and uh, a couple of the features that I like in here were things that I was really drawn to so let's just go ahead and take a look at this guy um, so it comes in the traditional Leatherman packaging. You can see it comes in this nice uh, sleeve package, and it comes with the instructions. It also comes with the uh, the sheath, which is actually a pretty decent sheath. I really do like this. Um, I, I kind of wish it was a button clasp. I'm not a big fan of the Velcro, but it works pretty well, and it fits uh, very snugly inside of here, so it's not all big and, and loose like the Leatherman Arc, which has all this room up at the top. I, I don't care for that. Uh, so the sheath is very nice. Um, and then it also comes with this little pouch with an extra blade. Um, we'll go ahead and talk about that later. Apparently I didn't take that out. Uh, we'll talk about this later because that is a very, very cool feature. Um, so we'll set that aside and we'll, we'll get back to that in a little bit. So the tool itself, like I said, this is an extremely robust, stout, tool. I'm just going to go ahead and start off by comparing it up against the Leatherman Wave um, because I think that's going to be, this is probably going to be a big competitor to the Wave if you're in the market for a robust multi-tool. Um, you can see that it is it is considerably bigger. Um, we can go ahead and just get a quick measurement on it. So for the Leatherman Wave, we are looking at right about four inches closed Leatherman Surge you're looking at about four and a half inches closed. So a half inch may not sound like much, but I can tell you it is quite a bit bigger. And then you also have to take weight into consideration. This guy, I think, I want to say if I remember correctly, was right around eight ounces. This thing was like 12 ounces. Um, I, I don't have a scale with me right now, but it is, it is considerably larger. When you pick up the two, there's no doubt in your mind that this is a lot, a lot heavier. But anyway, you know, Leatherman Wave, like I said, very robust, very stout tool, but it just uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired if you're out working in the garage and you've got to you got to really wrench on some uh, some big bolts or a big part that you're trying to get uh, get you know unstuck, you know, whatever you may be using it for. Um, I just wanted something a little bit bigger, and I definitely found that in the Leatherman Surge. I mean, this thing, I, I could just go on and on about how tough this tool feels but it really does just feel so substantial in the hand and it does offer a lot of similar tools to the Leatherman Wave so some of the exterior tools are the same let's go ahead and go over that right now um, and this is going to be kind of a review on the Leatherman Surge but then also at the same time kind of a comparison up against the Leatherman Wave so first off we've got the main blade you can see oh, that is the serrated blade and yeah, you know what let's just start with that uh, you've got the serrated blade, which is the same between the two of them, just the uh, the Leatherman Surge, and you'll see this is going to be kind of a uh, kind of a theme here. Uh, the Leatherman Surge's blade is definitely definitely larger. Oops. Yeah, you can see substantially larger on that guy, and they both are uh, one hand operational. They both are on a liner lock, which is nice. Um, let's go ahead and look at the main blade. Do this without cutting myself here. Again, quite a bit larger. Um, on the Leatherman, actually, you know what, now that I've got them up side by side, definitely larger, not a ton larger. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on that as well. It's kind of hard. With the with a camera at an angle, you're not going to get a great idea of the size difference because it kind of, you know, it kind of skews things. But you can see that the blade here, the sharpened edge is right about two and three quarters, and then here the sharpened edge is at three inches. So you get about a quarter inch more cutting edge on the blade there on the Surge. And then uh, this is where tools start to get a little bit different. Here you're going to have a saw blade. And let's see if we can get it in the right orientation. 
So you've got the serrated edge here. Across from the serrated edge on the serge, you're actually going to have a very large, very large pair of scissors. And uh, that's very nice to have that on the outside. Um, I do find myself in a lot of situations where scissors are the answer. Let's say you're snipping very thin wire or if you're trying to cut something that a knife just isn't practical to cut, a pair of scissors is nice to have. Now, if you're trying to get to the scissors, we'll go ahead and put those out of the, out of the way. Uh, if you're trying to get to the scissors on the Leatherman Wave, you actually have to open the tool up. You have to find them in here and then pull them out. And it's kind of weird. They actually flip over, which is kind of an interesting design. Um, and then they lock into place and you got to close this back up and now you have a pretty good pair of scissors these are plenty sharp they definitely get the job done but they do not have the same robust feel as a leatherman surge scissors i mean just look at those for comparison considerably larger on the leatherman surge and with the one hand operation um, i mean that that's just the way to go if the scissors are important to you and then again you have to kind of fiddle with this one to get that flipped over tuck it back in there and then close the tool back up this one is as easy as I use my uh, I use my middle finger to uh, depress that liner lock and then you just kind of flip this right over and there you go well now <laughs> now there you go so anyway it's all closed up um, and then another difference on the outside tools so here you have um, you have the file this is going to be a diamond file on one side a crosscut file and then you actually have kind of like a hacksaw blade or like a cutting edge on the very edge of that file here and then over here so you can see that I do have a file on it again the diamond crosscut and the hacksaw or uh, cutting edge on the very edge of that but you can see that this one looks a little bit different on the Leatherman Surge and the reason it does is because this is actually a T-shank adapter so this is for the Bosch T-shank blades and uh, any Bosch T-shank blade will actually fit in here and you can see they provide this file as a T-shank and then let's go ahead and go back to this cutting this uh, saw blade that I mentioned earlier and it's very nice they provide this little pouch because you can actually put a couple of blades in here if you want to and then they also provide you with the saw blade so that is a very very nice feature the fact that you can actually swap these out and then if you want to replace the blade with a new one, say it's dull, or say you actually want to get like a, uh, like a hacksaw blade, you want to get a real dedicated metal saw blade, um, you can actually put one in here. And I, I'm, I do believe you can buy them in a size where this would actually still even close up with, a, uh, with an aftermarket blade. So you can see these are kind of smaller blades, so not every single T-shank blade is going to close in here, but the right size blade, and I can get a measurement for you just so we know what size that is so you need a for the actual cutting edge right about two and a half inches the uh the whole blade itself should be about three inches to the back of the t-shank so about a three inch blade would fit in here and you can actually keep it closed up now this is good and bad um good because you have the option to swap out the blades very very easily bad because now you kind of have to make a decision of whether you want a file or if you want a uh, an actual saw, and I can tell you in one instance, um, I kind of I kind of screwed myself over because I had the file in my pocket and I was actually outside um, cutting a large piece of uh, four by eight plywood. I was cutting marine plywood. It's very very expensive stuff. So when I'm making my cuts into the plywood, because of the circular blade, if you make the cut to uh, you know fully cut it and you're cutting into the sheet. Um, if you go past, let's say you're cutting to a right angle, if you go past to complete the cut with a circular saw, you're going to actually have a little edge there at the end of the cut where you've dug into the fresh material. Well, what I like to do is I like to stop the blade right at my cut line to make that 90, um, and then I take a hand saw and I saw the rest of that material to uh, basically complete the cut, if you know what I'm talking about. Well, I had the file in my T-shank adapter on this thing and the saw blade would have been perfect but of course I left the saw blade in my house so that was a bummer so you kinda have to make a decision of what you want to do unless you carry it in the sheath if you carry it in the sheath you can actually slip this right in this back pocket and you've got two additional blades if you'd like um, now you can see I put a pocket clip on my tool I actually very much prefer to carry all of my multi tools in the pocket on a clip um, so, of course, I could still pop this in my pocket, but I like my tool to just be a standalone unit. I don't like to have anything else in my pocket, um, ideally, although this is not a very big deal. 
Um, but to get around that, a little, a little uh, trick that I saw, we'll go ahead and take this saw out. And you can see it's very easy to swap out. Not difficult at all. So we'll go ahead and tighten that back down. Close this. So this only works with the saw blade or a thinner blade. If you had like a metal saw blade, it should work as well. But if you put the file in the T-shank adapter, you can actually stick this saw blade down in with the serrated blade. And it should work with the straight edge as well. But if you get that down in there and kind of just wiggle it just right, it'll actually close up in there. So I'm going to start probably carrying it like this just to have that saw blade with me at all times. Of course, if you want to use the serrated blade, you have to take the saw blade out and you're going to scratch up the finish, but I really don't, I really don't care about that. But um, at least that is a way where you can have the, uh, the file with you on the tool and you can also have the saw blade accessible if you need it. So uh, like I said, I, I do plan on carrying it like that, so that's pretty sweet. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at the internal tools. So you can see external tools, some similarities, a couple of differences. But uh, I mean, you, you guys can already see the construction of these tools is, is almost identical. They're just very, very similar. It just comes down to a little bit different, uh, little bit different offering in the internal tools and then also uh, the overall size. But we'll go ahead and look at the inside tools. We've got the Leatherman flat bit drivers, which I actually really enjoy. Um, a lot of people kind of complain about them because they're not a full-size driver. I have yet to have an issue with that, um, you know, not being enough driver. Uh, having, you know, a full three-dimensional driver, in, in my experience, um, wasn't, wouldn't really be that much of a benefit. I like the, the, uh, I like the space savings of this two-and-a-half roughly dimensional tool, and uh, I do need to get a couple of those flat bit, um, flat bit holders with uh, different bits. And I think that that could just absolutely expand this tool's abilities if you have a lot of different bits to throw in here. And they're also all double-sided, which is just incredible. So I really like these bits, and you can see that it's got the same flat bit on both. We'll close that up. The Leatherman Surge has this uh, can opener, and I believe it's also a bottle opener combination. Um, I have yet to use that. I imagine it would work pretty well. I can see reviews say it works pretty well, so I'll just take their word for it. Not really something I plan on using on either of these tools, a can opener, maybe as a bottle opener. And you can see that the Leatherman Wave has the same tool, and I think it is just a little bit smaller. It is just a hair smaller on the Leatherman Wave. Uh, also kind of a theme between these tools. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the other side. We'll just fan all of these out and take a quick look at them. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little disorganized here. But we can see we've got the awl slash reamer. Um, we've got a wide flat blade with uh, kind of like a pry bar and then also a thinner flat head. This I have used as a pry bar. I was actually working on my um, brother-in-law's car and we had a plastic piece of uh, uh, plastic shielding underneath the wheel well that I had to pry away to access the headlights and this thing I, I wrenched on this thing pretty hard and it was able to pull that plastic shielding away with no problem now it's just plastic but again I mean there was no bending anything like that it, it felt just about as sturdy as it could be and I was very impressed and then on the Leatherman Wave we'll take a look at all of these internal tools uh, I did already pull out one of them which is the scissors like I said you know good enough for a small pair of scissors but uh, nothing uh, nothing spectacular there. And then uh, this is a difference between the two of them. You do have the micro driver on the Leatherman Wave. Um, I, I do like having the micro driver, but for what I use these tools for, I, I don't really use it that often. And then you can see you also have here a flathead and a little bit less robust pry bar. We'll actually open the uh, Leatherman Waves or the Leatherman Surges back up just to give a size comparison on the pry bars because to me that is something that I definitely use on these tools. So you may want to see that difference there. So the Leatherman Surge is considerably larger than the Leatherman Wave. And then we'll look at thickness. Um, they actually look to be about the same thickness. The Leatherman Surge just seems to carry that thickness a little bit farther up towards the tip. So we'll close that back up. And then, of course, we will look at the uh, kind of main tool on these multi-tools, and that is the plier aspect. So again noticeably larger on the Leatherman Surge. You can also see that up on the uh, heads, they've added material to both sides to give this even more strength, more robustness. Um, it looks like the cutting heads are 
exactly the same on the wire cutters and I can say that both of them perform exceptionally well. I've cut plenty of wire with both of these um, coat hanger and it just chews them up no problem, no issue there whatsoever. Very, very stout. And you can see both of them actually have wire crimpers also on the back end. Um, Leatherman Surge also throws in a, a hard wire cutter. So if you have some pretty thick stout wire, you can you can cut it there. You can see that little uh, kind of that little notch down at the bottom there, um, and it works exceptionally well. And I can tell you again, both of these things, I mean, both of these tools are are exceptional pliers. You just get a little bit more strength and I think a little bit more utility out of this larger set than you do out of the Leatherman Wave. Um, and you know it just it just feels tougher which i really like when i'm out working in the garage i like to have a tool in my hand that i can be confident in even if it is tougher than i may think it's going to be like the leatherman wave um just having that feeling of of strength just gives you a lot of confidence in your tool and that's that's what i love one thing i love about this thing so kind of little um little minor things that I've noticed between the two and this is going to vary between you know tool to tool um, this is going to be specific to your your particular tool and that is kind of their their action so the the Leatherman Wave mine is actually quite stiff this came quite stiff and it has not loosened up hardly at all um, it works fine just like this but you can feel it kind of is like start stoppy it kind of it just sticks a fair amount Leatherman Surge this thing is about as smooth as it gets um, this honestly this is as smooth as my Leatherman Arc and that thing just I mean it just swings around like a, like a free pivot and this is just about the same um, and as far as the lockup in the closed position they're both extremely sturdy neither of them feel like they're gonna come open you really have to want it to come open and, uh, and then in the locked out position, it's a nice snap on the Surge and also a nice snap on the Leatherman Wave, which I love. Um, that was a huge problem I had with the, uh, the GOAT multi-tool here. Uh, when it is in the, uh, basically the deployed position for the pliers, there was no lock. It just kind of opened and then you just basically relied on the spring tension to keep the, the handles from separating. Here, you do actually have a fair amount of, of lock, I guess. It does keep these handles in position. You really have to break that detent on both sides to get it to close up. And I like that. I, I very much prefer that. Um, and the Surge is a little bit stiffer, which is great. Um, let's see. Uh, pocket clips. So they both technically take the same pocket clip, which is this one. This is Leatherman's kind of standard pocket clip. I think it works on the the wave, the surge, the charges, and maybe other models. Um, the problem is when I when you put it in the surge, and I actually took this pocket clip out to put it in the surge. Um, it's it, it's got a lot of play. I might actually let's go ahead and see if I can do that real quick. There we go. That's out, and then this guy will take this one out. I'll talk about this clip in just a second. Uh, there we go. So this is the standard Leatherman. Uh, clip you can buy this aftermarket. It also comes with a couple of models. It comes with the charge and the charge plus TTI I think um, But again, you can buy this you can buy this straight from Leatherman and it is designed to work in the surge But let me just show you How it works so you go ahead and stick it in there It locks into this lock here, and then you can see It just wiggles around like crazy. I mean there's a ton of play there now is it coming off definitely not it's not going to cause this tool to come out of your pocket or anything like that. It's just, it's more play than what I like. And with a tool that is so robust, everything is locked up so solid. Um, I just don't want a pocket clip that doesn't feel as robust. So I went on Amazon and I actually found this guy. I think it was like $7. Um, just look up, uh, I, I think, honestly, if you Google a pocket clip and just uh, something that's specifically made for the Surge aftermarket for a tighter fit, you have to make sure that they specify that it is a tighter fit than the standard clip. Um, you can go ahead and pick these up. Again, I spent like seven bucks on it, and now it is locked, and then look how much play you have there. Still a little bit, but very, very little, and it doesn't feel like it's knocking around or rocking around. It's just a little bit of flex in the clip itself that's moving. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. It doesn't look very good. The coating on it is quite cheap. And, um, you know, spring tension is good, but I'm sure it's a relatively soft metal. So it could probably deform pretty easily. But for like 7 bucks or whatever versus the, I think, 20 they charge for this one, 
that's the way to go. Get yourself an aftermarket clip for the surge. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, uh, which is actually not a negative on the surge, it, it's kind of a negative on the Leatherman Wave, and that is uh, blade play. This thing has up and down rock. It's got side to side play, quite a bit of play in that blade. And you can actually see when I rock it up and down, hopefully you can see that movement there. And then the side to side movement may be a little harder to see. Um, so that is an issue I had with the Leatherman Wave. I don't have that issue with the Leatherman Surge. Um, this thing has a little bit of side to side play, but barely and then just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of up and down play. But, I mean, you almost can't even feel it. So it is much, much more solidly locked out on the Leatherman Surge. So it just, again, adds to that robustness, that feeling of, of toughness and quality. Um, again, this is probably going to be specific to your particular tool. Uh, my understanding is Leatherman's um, overall quality control I think that you can you can have kind of different experiences between you know tool to tool, um, even in the same model. But uh, my experience is the Leatherman Surge just seems a little bit tighter, and then also um, there's just absolutely no play in the pivots when it's in the open position. I have literally no play. There's no uh, there's no movement in those handles, and then I, I am happy to say that the Leatherman Wave is exactly the same so both of these are very well locked out in the uh, handles to the pliers very 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 good so let's go ahead and talk about the size real quick this is getting to be a long video but there's there's a lot of points that i really wanted to hit um overall size the leatherman wave is an excellent size to put in the pocket on a clip excellent this is this is it's it's a little bit heavy it maybe is a little bit thick but it's, uh, it's nothing crazy. And I actually, I wanted to do this to begin with. I'm going to pull it out against my Microtech MSI. Now, I, like I said, I don't have a scale, but uh, I, I do, you know, you can see it's, it's quite a bit shorter. So the overall carry profile is going to be smaller on the Leatherman Wave. And it's actually a little bit taller that way, height as well. And thickness, uh, it is substantially thicker, but you can see it's, it's not wildly thick. Um, so what I'm getting at is this is an excellent in-the-pocket carry. Now, the Leatherman Surge was, that was the biggest problem that I saw with the Leatherman Surge, which is why people would say, you know, it's not really a pocket clip kind of multi-tool. Now, I can tell you that it it actually works pretty well on a pocket clip. You maybe don't want to carry it in lightweight shorts, but if you're wearing heavy cargo shorts, jeans, or uh, cargo pants, uh, I, I really don't think this is going to give you much of an issue on a pocket clip. Now, I'm about 6 foot, 240. I have a 38 waist, so like I'm a little bit of a bigger frame guy. Um, and, and this, honestly, it just carry, it carries just fine. I, I don't notice an issue. It's heavy, but uh, I don't notice it in my pocket necessarily, and it fits in there just fine, and I still have room for more stuff in my pocket. So in the pocket on a clip, it, it does work pretty well. I wouldn't let that uh, sway you away from it if, if you're concerned about the overall size if you want to carry it on a clip. I don't carry it in a pouch. I just don't like have thing, having things hanging off of my waist on my belt. Everything that I carry, I want it to be in my pocket. And again, it works just fine. So uh, anyway, guys, I mean, that's kind of my review on the Leatherman Surge. An excellent, excellent tool. A little bit more expensive than the Leatherman Wave, but I really think that you are paying for a little bit more robustness, a little toughness. I don't think it's an unfair price right around 150 um, actually, yes, I believe that's about what you're paying for this guy, 150, 160. Uh, I, I think it's a good deal. I really do. And if you want something just a little bit tougher than this guy, uh, the Leatherman Surge is an excellent choice. But if you're good with a little bit more compact, better in the pocket carry, lightweight, Leatherman Wave is an excellent choice as well. So anyway, hopefully this guy, this this helps you guys kind of narrow down your decision on uh, which one you wanna you wanna pick up. And I do have, like I said, I have the Leatherman Arc. I also have the Goat Multi Tool. Keep an eye out in the next couple of weeks. I want to do a, a review of all of them to kind of narrow down uh, which tool might be right for for uh, what what kind of person and what their needs are. So keep an eye out for that video. Uh, like I said, it should be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, and anyway, thanks guys. Appreciate you watching. Um, if you have any input, please leave them in the comments. I love reading the comments. Uh, if you like the video, leave a like. And if you want to see more of my EDC knife and tool content, please consider subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.